I'm going to talk about uh, transitional fossils, uh, in particular uh, of the horse. Okay. Okay, so what we're going to do, David, is I am going to change up the format a little bit. We're going to focus on one topic at a time. I'm going to give you three minutes to present your line of evidence. So it looks like you've got about three minutes to present a, a, a case for evolution through horse fossils in transitional forms. So we'll give you three minutes and then we'll give uh, Kent equal time to respond. So David, whenever you're ready, you got three minutes to argue from, from horse evolution. Okay, so I'm sure Kent remembers this slide uh, where Todd Wood from uh, uh, Creation uh, he was with Answers in Genesis originally, uh, says that horse evolution is more like macro evolution. Um, well, uh, here's a lineup of horses, uh, and I'll make it quick. You guys won't get it, but, uh, oh, come on. Um, these horses are uh, increasing in size. The skull uh, is increasing in size, but the teeth are uh, progressing toward grassy eaters. Uh, they're the hyracotherium. Uh, was a browser, unlike what Kent said in his uh, CSE 102, uh, where he said that Heracotherium was a carnivore and ate meat. Uh, that's not true. It was a browser. They're all browsers up until the last couple. Um, you noticed in the skull that uh, the diastema uh, in those uh, skulls uh, is getting larger. That's the space between the front teeth and the molars uh, where the uh, bit is placed. Um, the leg uh, is progressing. Uh, you can see that the side uh, toes are regressing. Uh, there at the end, I showed the back side of a horse, and he has what they call uh, stem bones uh, that are the remains of those uh, two and four toes. Uh, on the, Over here on the side, Um, over here on the side, on the left-hand side, I show the skull of a hyrax. A hyrax is a little animal that's still living that is closely related to an elephant. It has nothing to do with horses except that its name kind of sounds familiar, but a hyrax is not a hyracotherium. The hyracotherium is something that looks a little bit like 20 this. seconds. Okay. The other thing I want to tell you is that all of these horse kinds could have very well been all of one kind that that came off the ark. And you seem to don't want to believe that. Uh, this slide here shows that there are actually 15 different uh, transitional fossils. Five seconds. And uh, so uh, just shows that there are a lot more than just the one or two that you know about. I'm done.
Okay, thank you very much. And the perfect uh, spot to end it as we move into Archaeopteryx there. And so, David, I gave you an extra minute just to make sure you were able to uh, conclude your points on horse evolution. And so we are going to give uh, Kent now equal time to respond. Kent, four minutes whenever you're ready. Well, thank you so much. David, what you showed were pictures of different animals, artist conceptions, actually, drawings. You do not know that any of those on that chart change to any of the rest of them. Putting them in a sequence like this is not science. Saying that it went from a four-toed uh, small animal like a dog and turned into a horse, the number of ribs changed, the teeth changed, that you don't know that they're related at all. Could it be that the hyrax has always made baby hyrax? You don't know that they've changed to anything. The horse evolution has been disproven for 60 years. I'm surprised you're still using that. Uh, biology textbook on my shelf here. Other examples, including the gradu much repeated gradual evolution of the horse, have not held up under close examination. G.G. Simpson, who was a strong proponent of evolution before I was born, he said many examples commonly cited, like the horse evolution, can be readily shown to have been unintentionally falsified. G.G. Simpson said that in 1950. Huh. The early classical evolution of the tree of the horse was all wrong, Science Newsletter, 1951. Uniform continuous transformation of Hyraso theorem to equus so dear to the hearts of generations of textbook writers never happened in nature. G.G. Simpson. Horses did not evolve. Apologetics Press has a great. Now, I don't know Todd Wood. I don't know what he believes. But if he believes there's examples of macroevolution, he's wrong. I'll debate him too. If he believes the horse evolution is science, I'll debate him on that. No, it's not. I don't know who he is or what he does. Okay. I heard the name before, but I don't know anything about him. Okay. They put these horses, these, these creatures in order. Only the top couple are horses. A lot of animals today look similar. Got four legs and a nose on the front and a tail on the back. That's not proof they're related. But the biology textbooks are still teaching this. Let's see. Even evolutionists have known for more than 60 years the scenario of the horse evolution is completely false. Many books are still using this incorrect information to try to teach the false theory of evolution. Let's discuss how we know the horse evolution is false. The animals shown in these pictures are fully formed animals. They're not turning into other kinds. The first animal, that is called Eohippus, does not show any signs of changing into any other animal. No animal today can do this. Only your drawings on paper can do it. Uh, there's no reason to claim it's the ancestor of a horse. There are no fossils of Eohippus transitioning or changing into anything. The same can be said of all the animals on that chart. They're not evolving into other kinds of animals. They are complete, totally, fully functional animals, fully formed and perfectly created. G.G. Simpson said, The uniform continuous transformation of Hyrasotherum to Equus, so dear to the hearts of generations of textbook writers, never happened in nature. If it did not happen in nature, that means the only place it happened is in the imagination of the textbook writers. Bingo. When we look at the evidence, we discover horses did not evolve. They were created by an intelligent designer. Many years ago, God said to Job, have you given, the, who gave the strength, horse its strength? God created the horse and they do just fine. Darwin said, if my theory be true, numberless intermediate changes, gradual changes must have assuredly existed. I agree. In the years after Darwin, his advocates hope to find these transgressions, but they haven't been uh, trans transitions, but haven't been found. And fear fantasy has crept into textbooks. Only got 30 seconds. There are no missing links. The whole chain is missing. There is no chain. Absence of fossil evidence is a nagging problem for evolution. Stephen Gould at Harvard University said, yeah, there's no evidence. If you found an animal that looked like it was halfway between a dog and a horse, and you found the fossils, that doesn't prove it's changing from a dog to a horse. It proves you found a dead animal in the ground. That's all it proves. You know, animal today is changing into anything else. David, you have a silly religion. I wish you'd give it up. Your turn.